Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's Dynamics 365 Tech Talk. Today's topic is VAT reporting for legal entity with tax registrations in multiple countries. My name is David, and I'll be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this session through Teams Live events, and the audio can be heard through your device speakers. This session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. When you join this event, your name, email address, and or phone number may be viewable by other session participants in the attendee list. By joining, you're agreeing to this experience. The recording will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, please use the Q&A panel located on the right side of your screen. Our presenters will be responding to your questions throughout the presentation and during the Q&A segment at the end. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. Presenting for us today from Microsoft, we have Adam Chukavka, Product Manager in the Dynamics Globalization team. Adam, over to you. Thanks, David. Hello, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining and for watching this session if you are accessing that from the recording. My name is Adam Trukavka and I lead regulatory reporting domain in Dynamics Globalization team. Together with Anastasia Shanina and Elisaveta Golubt, uh, who are senior product managers in my team, uh, we prepared this session to introduce you to new functionality for companies registered in foreign countries for purpose of uh, indirect tax reporting. We will focus primarily on European scenario related to VAT and intra-community transactions reporting. However, this, this functionality may have broader application. But uh, before we begin, please uh, take a moment to read through disclaimer for this session. In this presentation, we'll be talking about functionality, which potentially will be available in future product updates and uh, that functionality may change without notice in the final release. Uh, we may also be using, while speaking, uh, some forward-looking statements, which may not materialize. And thank you for reading this disclaimer. As for <clears throat> today's agenda, uh, we, we planned the session that way that uh, uh, mostly Anastasia will provide introduction to this uh, new functionality, how to configure it and use it uh, in this scenario of reporting with multiple uh, foreign tax registrations. And at the end, we'll talk about uh, roadmap uh, and uh, what has been already delivered and what is coming in the future updates. As uh, David mentioned, while Anastasia will be presenting, Elisaveta and myself, will be responding to your questions, which you may enter in the Q&A panel of this Teams window, which you're probably using for watching this uh, session. We will also address questions at the end of the session, if there will be anything remaining. Okay, and uh, before we deep dive into the details, I wanted to introduce some, uh, some basic uh, uh, boundaries of a scenario we'll be discussing through multiple demos later in the session and, and basically we use this scenario as a background for, for designing the functionality. So uh, as on this diagram, you can see that um, we, uh, we assume that there are companies which manage, bus manage businesses across multiple countries and that those businesses may be organized internally in dynamics finance uh, as uh, either multiple legal entities or single legal entity. And in case a company chooses implementing on top of uh, single legal entity management of uh, their businesses across multiple countries, they may have obligations for registration for VAT reporting purposes or tax reporting purposes in those countries. And actually that may be required or allowed without formally established foreign subsidiary. Uh, that business requirement is applicable in uh, multiple business cases we had in mind. For instance, lowering risk distribution business model may consist of organization with warehouses located in multiple countries and company uh, choosing to transfer goods uh, or products uh, between those warehouses creates a legal obligation for tax reporting. There are also applicable uh, 
tax reporting use cases, we believe in a case of transfer pricing of products through principal company. And uh, those use cases were primarily our focus uh, in, in modifications which we have done to the system. Uh, in those cases, uh, for purpose of our demo, we assumed that there is a legal entity, single legal entity in dynamics finance, meaning uh, like in our case, we chose Belgium to be that single legal entity, the base legal entity. And that legal entity has uh, defined tax registration numbers associated with addresses in multiple countries. Further in this presentation, Anastasia will use this uh, this scenario and she will lead through those particular transactions flow uh, and how the transactions are coming and, and uh, how they appear in the reporting. Uh, that uh, obviously that Belgian company in such a setup will execute purchases and sales to and from multiple warehouses located in different countries. And as results of those operations, there will be a need to create the required tax filing reports in countries of tax registration. So this is our primary scenario, which we're going to, to navigate through. And we'll, we'll demonstrate how to create VAT declarations, intrastat and EU sales list reporting from that Belgian legal entity for purpose of filing taxes in Netherlands, and Sweden in this uh, demo presentation, but the functionality spreads uh, through multiple countries and we'll talk about it in the, uh, when we'll discuss the roadmap. I need to mention that uh, support for this scenario requires tax calculation service, which will be globally available in upcoming fall release, and uh, which is the update for the next month. And in the community website, which you may find recording to this session, uh, there is also recording available recording for tax calculation service. Our, our colleagues from tax team provided that session, I think two weeks ago, earlier in September. And also we will have, we'll have direct link from that deck, uh, at the end of the presentation, obviously we'll also share deck with you after the presentation, so you can navigate to the tax, uh, calculation service uh, tech talk session. And as I mentioned, uh, current design of this functionality considers only reports mandatory by law in our supported countries, which we consider are VAT declarations, USACs and intrastat reports. Accordingly to needs of uh, particular implementation, there may be other existing reports which will require adaptation by individual customization to work in this scenario. And uh, that's the choice of uh, the company, which is at the moment of implementation. Okay. Now, without any further ado, I hand over to Anastasia to lead you through all the details. And Anastasia, stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. So we'll start with information about how to activate this new functionality. To activate it, you first need to make sure that you enabled in the feature management, the feature support multiple VAT registration numbers, and also that tax calculation service is enabled. Also, if you transfer goods between warehouses in different countries, you should enable tax and transfer order feature. Then you need to activate our new features in the feature management, which are sales tax declaration, intrastat reporting, and EU sales reporting for multiple VAT registrations. In case of EU sales list, you should, should also activate this feature, EU sales list transfer based on tax transactions only. Then in the legal entity with multiple VAT registrations, you will need to create VAT IDs for each tax registration. Then for each VAT ID, you need to create sales tax settlement period and tax authority. Also, you need to create uh, sales tax codes for each VAT ID and define currency of VAT reporting for each sales tax code. This all relates to features for multiple VAT registration numbers. And um, here is the link 
to the demo recording of the tech talk when there are where there are more information about how to configure tax calculation service and multiple VAT registration number features. Now we will concentrate on the reporting part. So for reporting part in this legal entity with multiple VAT registrations, in the tax calculation parameters, you need to activate a VAT declaration, EU sales list, and intrastat. If any of these parameters is not enabled, uh, then uh, user experience for reporting will not change for this legal entity. And you can prepare reports only for country of the legal entity. Now we'll start with uh, more details about how to execute and set up VAT declarations. Here is uh, the high level process of uh, how VAT declarations are generated. Uh, during the reporting period, you run a report sales tax for settlement period procedure for each of your tax registrations and preview VAT declaration in Excel format. Amounts in this report are generated in the currency of the sales tax codes. Then, in the end of the period, you run sales tax settlement procedure for each of the tax settlement periods. And after that, you are ready to generate VAT declaration file, and you will do it from the electronic messages module. For each country, there is electronic messages processing that you will be executing to get the file for the country. Here is an overview of released features for VAT declarations by this moment. Uh, for each country, uh, you can find electronic reporting formats that you need to import from the global repository and electronic message package that you need to import from the LCS shared asset library. Also here, you can find direct links to the documentation for each of the feature. And also uh, pay attention on this link. This is uh, a tech talk that was provided for integration to HMRC for United Kingdom and where execution of this feature for multiple VAT registration scenario was also discussed. Also, uh, please keep in mind that all these VAT declarations can be executed in multiple VAT registration scenario and also in legal entity with single VAT registration. These new VAT declarations use a new way of configuration through the application-specific parameters, which are located in the electronic reporting formats. Uh, here uh, we are looking based on the example of the Netherlands. Uh, you see here the list of the tax codes which uh, in example scenario can be used for what registration in Netherlands. NL VAT for sales at standard rate. NLRC for VAT payable from the purchases with reverse charge. And NL0 for sales to European Union countries. And in the application specific parameters, for this Netherlands VAT declaration format, there is a set of the pre-configured report elements which generate boxes of VAT declaration. And when you configure the VAT declaration, you associate sales tax codes with this pre-configured elements in the VAT declaration format. Now I can show you a short demo about how to set up VAT declarations using this new approach. In this demo, uh, we'll configure application-specific parameters for VAT declaration formats for Netherlands and for Sweden. Uh, this demo is pre-recorded and I will be commenting on top of this recording. We will go to electronic reporting workspace and reporting configurations. Under the tax declaration model, we see our VAT declarations. 
we need to add declaration for Netherlands and for Sweden. Let's start with XML format for Netherlands and go to application specific parameters. Here they are application specific parameters for Netherlands. And here we see that sales with an LVAT tax code generate box 1A domestic sales. Credit notes for sales with an LVAT generate also box 1A. Exempt sales with NL0 go to box 3B. Reverse charge VAT go to box 2A. And purchases go to box 5B, input tax. Here you can see list of available values for transaction classifier, which classifies tax transactions according to its source. Sales purchases, sales exempt, and so on. In this column, you see list of available elements for the Netherlands and which generate what declaration boxes. When you set up the line, you can filter, for example, by the row code and then select the value in the setup. Now let's just review the second format for Netherlands, which is for Excel. And we just will see that this format has the same application specific parameters as XML format. This is the same. Now let's go to Sweden. In these parameters, we also see that transaction with sales tax code is EVAT go to 510. Incoming VAT goes to box 48 input tax. Reverse charge VAT go to boxes 2030 and SE0 goes to box 35. Note that transaction classifier we selected value not blank, which means that regardless the tax transaction source, the setup line for tax code apply. We can disregard transaction classifier value when we configure enough sales tax codes to make one-to-one -one setup to VAT declaration boxes. Now we would like to export these settings with the aim to reuse them in another format. We exported them and we would like to reuse them in Excel format for Sweden. We go to this format to application specific parameters and use import function. We will import the file that we exported. Here it is. So we will be using the same settings. We are changing state to complete and close this. Now we would like to select Excel formats, which will be run in a report sales tax for settlement procedure. We will go to general ledger parameters. And then the sales tax tab, there is the fast tab, electronic reporting for countries, regions. We see our formats here for countries. So for Sweden, we execute uh, Excel report for Sweden. And for Netherlands, we execute Excel report for Netherlands. That's all for the first demo. So we reviewed application specific parameters for Netherlands and for Sweden exported imported the settings and also uh, defined Excel formats for our countries. Uh, here let's look in more details to a scenario which we'll be using in the demos today. As Adam mentioned in the Belgium legal entity there are two additional VAT registrations in Netherlands and then Sweden. And we'll concentrate on how to execute reporting for Netherlands and for Sweden from the Belgium legal entity. 
several documents are already posted before. So we are ready to execute the reporting. And these are goods flows of these documents. In the first goods flow, we start with purchase from the vendor in Germany to warehouse in Belgium. For Belgium, we apply purchase reverse charge through the global reverse charge functionality using two sales tax codes. One, what available for the purchase reverse charge and the other one for what deduction. Then we transfer goods from Belgium to Netherlands. In Belgium, we apply B0 tax code because this is sale to your country. And in Netherlands, we apply purchase reverse charge. Then we sell goods from Netherlands to final customer in France, which is EU sale for Netherlands and NL0 applies. Also, we sell to domestic customer in Netherlands and we apply domestic sales tax code with standard VAT rate. In the second flow, we start with purchase from the vendor in Netherlands to the warehouse in Netherlands, and we apply just standard input tax for Netherlands. Then we transfer goods from Netherlands to Sweden. In Netherlands, we apply tax code for intercommunity sale. For Sweden, we apply purchase reverse charge VAT for intercommunity purchase. Then we sell goods from Sweden to final customer in Denmark, applying SE0 tax code. And also we sell domestically to the customer in Sweden and we apply domestic tax rate. Also, you can see that for Sweden, we collect amounts all, also in Swedish krona because what reporting for Sweden will be provided in this currency. So uh, as a result of these two flows, we expect to have intrastat reporting, sales risk reporting, and what declarations and three countries. So specifically in Netherlands, we expect to have intrastat arrival from Belgium, intrastat dispatch to France, and this also is reported in EU sales list. Then we expect to have intrastat dispatch to Sweden, which is also reported in EU sales list for Netherlands. And all these transactions also reflected in what declaration for Netherlands. So for Sweden, we expect intrastat arrival from Netherlands, intrastat dispatch to Denmark, which is also reported in EU sale list. And all these transactions are also should be reflected in the declaration for Sweden. Okay, that was briefly about our scenario. And now we can see the demo about how to preview VAT declarations in Excel during the period. In this demo, we will run the procedure report sales tax for settlement period, and we'll preview what declarations for Netherlands and for Sweden. In the left bottom corner of the screen, you'll see a picture of our scenario for your reference. And also errors will point transactions in the picture, which generate the VAT declaration box. So we go to tax module and run report sales tax for settlement period. First, we'll start with Netherlands. We select the period and we now generate original declaration. The file created. So we see here box 1A, domestic sale to customer in Netherlands. We also see here 2A, which is incoming reverse charge from Belgium. Then we see supplies to EU country, to France. 
And here we see input VAT from the purchase reverse charge from the transfer. Okay, now we would like to preview the VAT declaration for Sweden. We select settlement period for Sweden and our period. This is the preview format for Sweden. So we see boxes 5 and 10. This is domestic sale to Swedish customer. We see what payable from the purchase reverse charge. This is from the transfer. We see EU sale to the customer in Denmark. And we see input VAT deduction from the purchase reverse charge. Okay. So we reviewed our two VAT declarations during the period. And in the end of the period, we will be ready to generate VAT declaration file. And I will show you in the demo how we do it. Before that, we should do some pre-configuration steps that are not part of the demo. First, we download packages of the electronic message processing for VAT declarations from the LCS Shared Asset Library. In LCS Shared Asset Library, this is located under the Data Package tab. Next, we will import data package to the legal entity from the data management workspace. And in the end, uh, we'll assign tax settlement period to the imported processing for collecting sales tax payments to the country VAT declaration. Uh, this final step is a part of the next demo. Electronic messages module um, is a configurable tool which um, can allow you to set up flows of processing the reports. Uh, in scope of our releases, we release example packages for VAT declarations, which you can update, and also you can create your own processings. Here is the link to documentation about electronic messages module. Now let's go to demo. In this demo, first we'll review settings of electronic messages. Uh, we'll associate sales tax settlement periods to country processing for Sweden and Netherlands. And further, we'll generate what declaration file for Sweden. Also, we'll do first two, two steps for collecting sales tax payment for what declaration in Netherlands. So first, let's go and review imported electronic message processing, which is done in the setup by user admin. This is all list of electronic message processing. So we'll see this is for Sweden, which contains of actions, and this is for Netherlands. Now uh, we would like just to review uh, actions for generating the reports because they are mapped to uh, electronic reporting formats. This is for Netherlands. So action preview report will be executing electronic reporting format Excel for Netherlands and generate report will be executing format XML for Netherlands. And this is setting, this is configuration. For Sweden, preview report action will run Excel report for Sweden and generate report will run XML for Sweden. Now we'll need to associate in the populate records action settlement period to the action. So for Netherlands, we select here settlement period applicable for Netherlands transactions. And for Sweden, SE populate what return records, we select settlement period for Sweden. So we completed pre-configuration. Now 
in the end of the period, we will go to electronic message processing. Here is the full list. This is how end user will see it. We select Swedish VAT declaration and we create a new message for the new period, right? This will be a message for our current period. We select it and enter dates. Next, we will collect data, meaning that we collect sales tax payments so that I posted in advance. They are collected to message items. And here it is for Swedish sales tax settlement period. Yeah, this is the source. So we collect it. And now we are ready to generate the report. We click to update status to ready to generate. <laughs> And we'll be generating the report. First, we'll be generating Excel for previewing commands. In the clip button, you see that we, we have one file, which is our Excel. We can open it and review. This is the one which we already seen on the previous demos. We are fine. We are ready to generate the file. So we click generate report and action generate report. So now we have two files. The second file is for XML. This XML is um, mandatory format for what declaration in Sweden. We are fine. Now we will do just first two steps for Netherlands because the main processing is similar. We will create the message and define the period. Mm -hmm. And we do collect data. Now sales tax payment for Netherlands is transferred here. We can see it in the sales tax payments. We are fine. So all other steps for updating status and generating the reports will be similar to what we saw for Sweden. And for Netherlands, we also enabled integration to DigiPort of the VT declaration, and you can find more details about who to, how to configure and use this feature for Netherlands in the documentation for Netherlands. Okay, so we have finished this demo uh, where we reviewed how to generate VAT declaration files from the electronic messages. And that was all for what declarations. Now we'll go to the sec second section for intercommunity reporting. Here you can see the electronic reporting formats that are released so far for countries. And starting from these versions, you can run these reports from the legal entity with a different country context. Here, let's uh, briefly look on the settings for EU sales list report. And um, we'll note the differences with reporting for a single tax registration. Uh, first and important is that you set up sales tax codes and you select tax code currency in the sales tax codes. EU sales list will be generated in the specified currency. Also, don't forget that you always has an option to exclude certain sales tax codes from the EU sales list reporting. And the setting is located in sales tax code as well. Next, and this is not changed, you should define the reporting type, either item or service, in the item sales tax group. Uh, determination of whether the document should be transferred to EU sales list or not is defined by the list code. Uh, which is assigned to the document. And uh, now you have two options for how the list code is determined. First option 
is uh, that the value may be pre-defaulted to the value EU trade if the document is between two EU countries. Uh, and further, you can manually update list code on the document. Um, you define type of the country in the country region properties in the foreign trade parameters. And please note that uh, you will not have any country set as domestic in the legal entity with multiple VAT registrations, but you'll define all EU countries as EU. So in our example, Belgium is also configured as EU, being inside the le Belgium legal entity. Second option for list code determination is that the value of the list code will be transferred from the tax calculation service based on the list code applicability rules, which you configure. And next and final, um, in the foreign trade parameters, for each country of your tax registration, you define the reporting format of the EU sales list. Let's also look briefly on the intrastat settings. In the country region parameters, you'll set up the, kind, the type of the country as well. And this is the same setup which is used for EU sales list. Also here for each country, you need to set up country currency. And intrastat will be reported in currency, which you define here. So for Sweden, Intrastat amounts will be present in the Swedish Krona. All other Intrastat settings like transaction codes, compression rules, minimum limits, and so on, are not changed. And all tax registrations share the same settings. Also in the foreign trade parameters, you need to select for each country of the tax registration, the Intrastat format, which will be run in this country. In this table, you can review the elements that each country reports in Intrastat. And you should consider this information when you configure compression rules. Intrastat report contain mandatory elements, optional elements, and elements for country reporting purposes. <laughs> and um, when you set up which elements should be included in the compression, you should select the elements which exist in the country of your tax registration. For example, in our scenario with Belgium, Netherlands, and Sweden, we will need to enable all mandatory elements, then delivery terms and mode of transport from the Belgium and statistics procedure and transport document from Netherlands. Now we'll see the demo of how to generate intercommunity reporting for our scenario. In this demo, we'll transfer intrastat transactions for Belgium, Netherlands, and Sweden from the legal entity with primary address in Belgium. Also, we'll transfer EU sales list for these three countries. And we'll also generate a EU sales list for Sweden, sales list file for Sweden. And um, you'll see picture of our scenario in the left bottom corner of the screen. And errors will point to transactions on the picture which we are transferring. Let's go to uh, Intrastat first. And first we'll transfer for Belgium. Here is the registration number. We transfer customer vendor invoices and transfer orders. We see two lines. First is arrival from the ven vendor in Germany. And second is transfer to warehouse in Netherlands. Then next we'll transfer for registration in Netherlands. And we see three more lines. 
This is transfer from Belgium. This is sale to final customer in France. And this is sale to Sweden. And finally, we'll transfer for Sweden, selecting Swedish registration number. We have two more lines. This is arrival from inventory transfer. And this is sale to final customer in Denmark. Review the, the currency of the report. Swedish Krona for Sweden and Euro for Netherlands. Now we'll go to EU sales list. And we also start transferring with Belgium. So we, we transfer sales, shipments from the transfer orders. We can also transfer purchases and receipts from transfer orders, but we don't need it in these countries. So for Belgium, we have sale to Netherlands from the inventory transfer. Then we transfer sales list for Netherlands. We have two more lines, sale to France and transfer to Sweden. And finally, the transfer to Sweden. And we have one more line, which is the sale to final customer in Denmark. This is the currency of the reporting. So for Sweden, we are reporting in the Swedish Krona. Now let's just create the file for Sweden. So we're selecting what registration in Sweden. This dialog is applicable for report in Sweden already. So we select here the date. We select generate file, give name to the file and select contact ID which is the part of report for Sweden. So here we have the file with one sale to Denmark. Okay. That all. So we transferred intrastat transactions for three countries. And we transferred EU sales for three countries and also generated EU sales list for Sweden. So uh, we completed the main part of our demonstration. And now um, I suggest to review our roadmap and also we point to some useful resources about this functionality. Uh, this is the roadmap. Uh, this is the released and planned features. In 10.019 and 10.020, we released the features as a public preview, and then we made them available, generally available in 10.021 update. Um, in 10.019, um, we released a global part of uh, functionality, like defining uh, reporting formats for multiple VAT registrations, mm, reporting VAT declarations, um, transferring intrastat and sales list for multiple VAT registrations in the country currency. Uh, also, we developed including tax from transfer orders to your sales list. And also in this update, we enabled the reporting of Netherlands for execution from other legal entities. In 10.020, we released France and United Kingdom. In 10.021, we released Sweden and Switzerland. Also for these countries, France, Sweden and Switzerland, in scope of this project, we released new VAT declarations for these countries. And for Sweden, we also released new sales list format. Now about the plans. In 10.023 update, we plan to release Austria, Germany, and Spain. And for, for Spain, we also plan to release new VAT declaration model 303. 
And also we plan in upcoming monthly updates to release Norway, Poland, Finland, Denmark, and Belgium. So this was the roadmap. And now some more details about the documentation. So documentation about the feature that was demonstrated today. Um, this is located in Docs Microsoft Com site under the Dynamics 365 Finance. You select globalization, then globalization services, tax calculation, multiple VAT registrations. Here under multiple VAT registrations, you will see two topics. First, for multiple VAT registration numbers, where you can see how to configure this feature. And then you can see reporting for multiple VAT registrations, where you can find more details about the functionality which we demonstrated today. Under it, for each country, there are more details for country-specific reporting. And in upcoming updates, um, when we release new countries, the new countries will be appearing here as well. And we'll be also updating the topic for reporting for multiple VAT registrations. And finally, from my part, I would like to give you here on the slide useful resources. First, if you would like to learn about new reporting features before their release, or connect to our team with questions about reporting features, uh, please join Yammer group, tax reporting. Also here, you can see two links to um, recording of tech talks for tax calculation service, where also uh, the, um, multiple VAT registration numbers feature was discussed. And this is the link to recording for United Kingdom, where was discussed how to enable MTD integration in other legal entity. And here are direct links to two main topics for multiple VAT registration numbers and reporting for multiple VAT registrations. Um, and now we are completing the main part and we go to view and a section and I'm handing over to Adam. Thank you, Anastasia. That was a great presentation. So during, wh while you were busy talking we, we, with Elisaveta, we've been responding to many questions and there was lots of ideas and improvements, which we, which we left for, for later. And, uh, those of you who haven't uh, received your answer yet. Uh, I strongly recommend to join our uh, tax reporting Yammer group. This is in the framework of our uh, Microsoft uh, Dynamics Insider program. And the tax reporting Yammer group uh, has much more details and discussions around the functionality which we're presenting. Because as you have noticed, we actually started releasing some of the features in some private previews starting from 10.0.19 or, or even earlier. We tested this functionality with with bunch of customers who need this uh, this, this the particular uh, support for for the countries, and uh, in that in that Yammer group there is like echo of the discussions and more more deep dive questions and so on. So we we invite you to use our tax reporting Yammer group, and uh, if there is any question, you can also contact us directly through the Yammer group or writing us an email. There are also our contact information published there. However, uh, I think uh, most of the questions have been answered uh, with uh, lots of details. I hope uh, people who ask those questions are satisfied. There are a few, few questions which I left for responding in voice. Maybe that wasn't um, very transparent uh, in this presentation, but as I mentioned, we have also other recordings on the Yammer group uh, with which details for each particular country. For instance, uh, there was a question about uh, ap the applicability of the reports uh, for specific uh, countries, governments, requirements, uploading this to government website. So if I understand correctly, the question is uh, what we are delivering here 
we are delivering country specific formats of, of tax declarations. In most of the cases, we deliver functionality, which is allowing to preview, for instance, VAT declaration in Excel format, but also we generate uh, electronic format, whether it's a XML or um, CSV file, we provide this, this capability. And this is, uh, I think, standard in most, most of the countries. So we do not change the approach here in this modification. So whenever there is, uh, we, there's known and required format of electronic file, uh, that file will be generated in the system. Uh, and uh, that file format will be compliant with what, what government requires. And, um, uh, however, if there is, uh, if there is any other concerns, please let us know. And uh, I'm talking obviously about those countries, which we, which we support and which we have modified in scope of this project. There is, there was another question, Anastasia, about, um, about, uh, like, uh, not using of uh, tax reporting codes. And actually that was, that was long story. We decided actually long time ago about uh, those new designs of uh, tax declarations, those tax declarations, which you see here, we, we designed based on new electronic reporting data model, which is called right now tax declaration. And in that tax declaration data model, we do not use reporting codes for the purpose of uh, greater flexibility. Uh, for all the scenarios we wanted to support here. Previously, in the previous design, we would have to modify hard-coded in, you know, X++ language functionality supporting the reporting codes. But here we are giving giving to our customers and partners possibility to, to modify potentially those VAT declarations accordingly to the needs of implementation if if the required support doesn't come out of the box. So uh, long story short, explaining these questions, we, we, we try to avoid using the reporting codes previously used in, in previous tax declarations designs. And we believe that is uh, for, for greater good of everyone. And we have also other purpose. So we want to use those reports, which we design here as um, not necessarily dynamics finance specific. We design those data models of the old reports as uh, product agnostic. We, we want to move farther with this approach and potentially you can hear from us uh, later or in the future. Uh, we will be designing a specifically um, functionality for reporting from a data lake. Uh, it is uh, uh, probably, in, it will be called new service and uh, we will invite uh, customers to, to trying that, uh, that service. The point is the reports, which we designed today, the product agnostic reports will be easily transferable to the, to the new service. So, uh, that's the, that's the point in, in not using the tax reporting codes, if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, if there are any other questions, please let them come in. I don't know, Anastasia, Lisa, would you like to answer uh, or supplement anything else? The questions are coming. We're scrolling up and down through the Q and A. Actually, part. actually, lots of uh, nice and pleasant feedback. Thank you very much, everyone who responded to us and who were asking the questions. I think we mostly covered all of them. There are some of them left. I think we will respond in offline. Yes, we will respond offline or we will stay after the session will be closed and we will respond here. So you can, you can, uh, you can check later or we will provide, uh, also to get a, a, one of the questions actually was very often you ask here, uh, if we'll publish the deck, I think we will publish the deck, right? Anastasia with all those recordings. Um, I think we will publish the PowerPoint. A PowerPoint, right. right. And the recording, yeah. recording will be of the session. So, so everyone could replay the, the, the recordings. But uh, together, I think we plan to also deliver some kind of short summary of those questions as frequently asked questions. So 
you will not receive answer for your question now. Please check out later. I think David said we'll publish that in I know next five business business days. And on the same website where you signed up for this session, you will receive a summary of this frequently asked questions and potentially answer to your question. Otherwise, as I mentioned at the beginning, go to Yammer group and talk to us directly. Okay. I think we can close the session right now. So handing over back to David. Thank you very much everyone for participation and for all your questions and feedback. Thank you very much, Adam. I've posted a link to a short survey in the Q&A panel. We'd like your feedback on today's session and hear what you'd like to see in future events. Thank you for your participation. As a reminder, the recording of today's session will be available on the Tech Talks Community Dynamics page within five business days. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and audience for joining us today.